Now, production possibilities frontiers, or production possibilities curves. Suppose you live in a world where there's no such thing as currency, and there's only two goods, Ferraris and slippers. Now, uh, suppose on one, on one axis you measured how much slippers you can make, and on the y-axis you measured how many Ferraris you can make. Now, any point on this whole plane would really be what we call a bundle, because it's a certain amount of slippers and a certain amount of Ferraris. So if you were to graph all the points that you can produce, that it's possible to produce, well, that's your production possibilities curve. So here, if we were to look at this graph, these, would be, these points would be the production possibilities curve. Now, any point on the inside over here, for example, would be considered inefficient because you are able to make more of not just one, but both goods, right? You're able to make more of both goods. So that's why if you stop production at this point, that's inefficient. Anything on the line is efficient because what that means is to make any more of one good. If you wanted to make another pair of slippers, you're gonna have to make fewer Ferraris. And so that's why there's that trade-off. That's why PPFs, PPCs, they always slope downwards because of the trade-off. Now, anywhere outside the PPF is simply impossible to produce. Now, looking at this, how can we relate what we just talked about, opportunity cost, with production possibilities curves? Well, remember that it's the value of the next best alternative. But how do you measure cost in a world without currency? Well, it's gonna be in terms of the other good, the good that you're giving up, the good that you're not producing anymore. So here, if we wanted to look at the cost, what's the cost of making a Ferrari? Well, here we can use this formula that the cost of the good is the amount of the other good that you're giving up. So the cost of good X would simply be the amount of good Y that you're giving up divided by the amount of good X and the other way around. So here, how much it co uh, the cost of making 10 Ferraris would simply be 100 slippers. So here the opportunity cost of a Ferrari would be 100 slippers over 10 Ferraris. So that simply equals 10. 100 over 10 simplifies to 10. So that's what we'd say. We'd say that the cost of a Ferrari is 10 slippers. Likewise, if you were to take the reciprocal that'd be the cost of a slipper. The cost of a slipper is simply 10 Ferraris over 100 slippers, so that's 10 over 100, so that's 1 tenth. So one thing you might notice here is the cost of good x is simply change in y over change in x. That formula might be familiar from you from math class, from algebra. That's the slope. The slope of the line of the PPF is simply the opportunity cost of the x-axis good and the opportunity cost of the y-axis good is the reciprocal of that. So now what if your PPF looked something like this, where it wasn't just a straight line, where it was a curve like this? Well, in that case, all we have is that the opportunity cost is not constant. It's not the same cost everywhere at all these different points. Here, it's the same cost everywhere because it's the same slope everywhere. Here, as you produce more slippers, the cost of slippers go up because it's a steeper slope. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're given the values in terms of how many hours it takes to make a good, rather than how many of the goods you can produce, then the opportunity cost, it's actually uh, measured the other way around. So instead of opportunity cost of X, there's actually two ways to measure it. It's either how, mu how many units of Y you're giving up divided by how many units of X, or it's actually the time it takes to make one item of X over the time it takes to make one item of Y. So notice here, the opportunity cost of x in that case will have x on top and y on bottom if you're given the times as opposed to the number of units where it's the other way around. So here, for example, if you were given that it takes you 14 hours to make a Ferrari and only one hour to make a slipper, and then if you wanted to know the cost of a Ferrari, in that case, you wouldn't do slipper over Ferrari. You'd do the time it takes to make a Ferrari, so that's time for Ferrari, 14 hours, over the time it takes to make a slipper, one hour, so that's simply 14. So then you could say that the opportunity cost of a Ferrari is 14 slippers.